and go. Ah, welcome back everyone to the Virtual Railroader Academy. As always, I'm Professor Casey. And I'm Professor Nick, and it is great to be back in the land of Railroader for Railroaders Play Railroader. Yes, we are back in Railroader again. Um, tonight we are the local freight 203. I got a couple of things to take care of before we start. Um, cause, uh, L. Cannery, thank you for the two gifted subs, or one gifted sub, and uh, 6777 Productions. Thanks for subbing again, 11 months, ever at 11. I love that number. Uh, Ice of the Blue, thanks for the sub. Uh, Saxon Hale, thanks for the sub. And I think I'm caught up with everything happened while we were trying to get things sorted out on our end. Uh, so, we're here. We're back. We're running trains. Yeah. Um, and, we and thank you to those people. I will say, uh, with six seven 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 productions, I'm not. Con I, I'm convinced that might be the locomotive itself, because uh, I've been behind that engine. So I, I'm just picturing the locomotive itself somehow sentiently uh, supporting us. That, which is great. that sounds right. I like. I mean, I like to think it's a person, but I also think it's kind of hilarious that like an engine would be supporting us. Um, we, we have a very busy schedule tonight. We have a lot of work to do. So we should probably get out onto the main and uh, get over to our train. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take lead, I guess, for now, and uh, we'll sure. switch on the road. That works for me. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get myself put I'll, up in the cab here. And I'll make sure the way is clear for you. So, uh, so what is our subject of uh, conversation and education tonight? Uh, we are talking about all things local freight, and I know this is a topic you and I both greatly enjoy. Um, mm -hmm. Going around switching the, the local industries, uh, kind of ducking in and out of the way of uh, everything else that's out there. It is when you want the hands-on experience, you said, you know, digitally, of course, but when you want something that is involved, the local experience is most assuredly involved. Yeah, it's kind of a, you know, it's the most involved thing to do. It's, it's fun in your model railroad op sessions. It's, you know, I, I love my passenger trains, but, uh, you know, I, I like doing freight more. I think freight's more fun at times. Uh, getting to kind of poke around, uh, take care of your different industries. Um, a little bit more thought goes into it. It's a little bit more of a, uh, uh, Mm, what's the right word? It's a little bit more of a, a mental challenge, uh, which I, which I greatly enjoy. All right, get all my cameras set up here while we're chatting. So I, I like the mental challenge of, um, you know, you 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 get your switch list, you you get your your waybills, and uh, it's kind of up to you to figure out uh, how to make things do. Uh, and I, I like that. I, I like the mental challenge that comes with that. Um, looks like we got a train departing out ahead of us here, so we'll we'll creep on up to the other end of the yard. Hopefully you guys can hear the game well. Let me know if I need to turn stuff down, turn stuff up. Let's see. Uh, looking at uh, the conversation in the chat so far, uh, I sir the Blue Lion, Louisiana Northwestern or wherever I'd like to model from the Steam Era to now. Uh, is a short line. Um, I've seen conversations about copper roads. Uh, Cop Turn says, do you actually set out and pick up cars on this game? Or is it like all the other games out there where you just run through the unloading track? I don't know, you yeah. absolutely set out and pick up cars. We're going to be doing a bunch of that tonight. Yes. Although I would point out that the only game that I can think of that has unloading tracks is Train Z. Uh, Run 8. Derail Valley. Railworks slash Train Simulator Classic. Uh, and Microsoft Train Simulator Open Rails. Those all work by car spots. Um, different mechanisms behind them. But Train Z is the only one that I can think of that has kind of load on load tracks. Um, and even then it's usually just with coal. Uh... Uh, 6777 reports that the audio sounds decent. So, yes. And it definitely makes a difference when... And I find this in my model railroading, too. It makes a difference when your car movements feel motivated. Like, there's a 
Something is going to a place for a reason. Because that's what railroading is all about. And it's easy to forget that when you're taking uh, trains from one end of the line to the other, uh, you're doing end-to-end -end runs, or you're watching your model train going around in circles, uh, is that trains are about getting a thing from a place to another. And I think the local best represents that because you are, depending on the railroad and the territory, interacting directly with the customers. Like you are taking that car from wherever it came from to the customer directly and vice versa starting that car on its journey from the customer to wherever it's going to go which is exciting it is i i like it it's a uh, feels short line to me um and i i like that i like my, i like my short lines um you know 56 mile short line here but you know short line nonetheless i like I like the little pokey local train. Uh, it's it's where I got my start, and uh, I like I like getting back to that at times. Old five eight eight local crews also have the coolest old heads. Yes, because oh god, yeah. Because frequently those are the trains that are sought after because they're consistent scheduling. Again, railroad specific, but frequently consistent scheduling. So your experienced guys are going to go for it because they know what they're in for. And they're getting a regular call time and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's era that that's... extends beyond even modern rarity. Because I finally finished reading Set Up Running, which how how did you like it? It was good. I I did enjoy it. Uh, I I think that it um it definitely goes into a, a an interesting level of detail as far as. Railroad operations and how they connected to the culture at the time, more so than any other book that I've seen. And so I, I like it's it's a vibes book in that regard. Like it, I definitely it is, am reading it. And absolutely I'm on a vibes the book. Um, so yes, a huge endorsement for me. But especially um, the section uh, there's a section of the book where uh, our protagonist. I mean, it is a. It is a historical nonfiction book, but uh, the main character, if you will, Oscar Orr, is on a local service, and he selected because he's experienced and he wants the thing that's consistent and also gives him good, decent call time, but also uh, a um, he's operating out of Williamsport, which is near where he lived in Ralston. So yes, hence why you can find the old hoggers there. Oh, we've got somebody passing us. What do we got here? It looks like we got the uh, the Valley Local Atlanta. coming through. All oh, right, I guess uh, dispatchers out there uh, would like to get permission to depart. I guess as soon as uh, that train's out of our block. Uh, uh it. PRN schedule. What is that? <laughs> yeah. It's, it resembles a, something like a schedule. It depends. Some schedules really are schedules. Dispatch uh, answering. Hey, uh, DL2 is all made up here in uh, Dillsboro. We're looking to get out to Whittier. Yeah, as soon as you got a uh, green signal there at the east end of Cow, you, uh, you clear out of the yard. So just kind of take a look up the tracks there and see when you get a re green signal on that block. All right, what do you say we creep on up, Nick? Sounds good to me. Uh, six seven rates. How many locals we got running on this line? Oh, we have one, two, three, three freight locals, and then we have the local passenger train. The, so what, I guess that makes four technically. Three freight, like three freight. Yeah, three freight. Three one, freights. One passenger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, technically, we have a local here out of a uh, Dillsboro that does. A couple of industries between here and Silva, but I don't know. It's it's like it's a glorified yard job. Yes, a yard job that goes beyond the yard. Yeah. Uh, cop so, turn. Are the through trains AI controlled? Depends. That one was human, if I recall correctly. Uh, I, I think that one was human. Yeah. You want to normal up the switch behind us as we go by? Uh, 
Um, yeah, no, the I like working. I, I love doing the local stuff, the freight stuff when I started out and working with the old heads. Um, I just felt like I learned a lot and it got... I don't know, it, it felt more meaningful to learn from the guys who were doing this in the 50s and 60s when I hired out. Um, however many years ago I am now, I lost count. But I, I liked working with the old heads. I thought they uh, taught me a lot. Um, and I thought that it felt like they focused on um, the stuff you needed to know to be better than um, uh, it, Nick. Yes. Um, we we don't have a caboose. Oh, we should get one of those. I'm gonna I'm gonna shove back. You wanna line me back into that track we were on? I think we yep. left a I think we left some stuff behind. Sure, we'll go grab the stuff that we left. Eh, we probably should have done a brake test on the last car to make sure we had everything. That's on us trying to cheese our way through the job. But that's why we live and learn in the sim environment. And it's the stuff you can do in the simulator. Cut all the corners. Exactly. You can, uh... Um, yes, we got a well, well, uh, well-deserved well derp. Uh, yeah, no, we, we deserve that. A no comment and I don't tell the FRA. All of which I think are applicable. That's, um... Uh, Got the F, uh, you know, as we say in my server, uh, in the VRA server, the FRA is a post 1.0 feature. Well, you I know like this, that. you know this. See, this was planned because now we can talk about why it's important to do a brake test and do your set and release before you depart. I have a question about brake tests. How yes. frequently is a local performing a brake test, given that one is frequently picking up and setting off cars so you have to do every time you pick up a car if it hasn't had an initial terminal within 24 hours um you have to do an initial terminal brake test on that and that is a leakage test uh a full service application you check to uh, you check your application all your brake shoes you check your release make sure nothing's hanging and dragging um and then you're good Four cars. If four cars. Three. Three. Two. Two. One. One. Half. Half. Truck. Truck. Bang. Got him. And drop getting there hooked up now. Alright, there's a handbrake on that uh, first car. I will get that too. Uh, so every, if, you know, we cut away from our cut, we go drop something off, we couple back up. Um, Khan needs to walk on down to the hind end and do what's called a class 3 brake test or a set and release. The engineer takes a set, I don't know. I think it's technically 20 pounds. I, I take enough of a set that it does something. Let me know when you're on. I am on. All right, here we go. Um, I take enough of a set that it does something. And um, then a release to make sure it releases on the hind end. And so it's, it's called a set and release because it's, it's really a continuity check. You're making sure you have air all the way to the back. So any time that you pretty so pretty much any time that you would be picking up a car from a customer because there's a good chance chance that it won't have had a uh, been operating in a 24-hour time span. Correct. Um, you know, if we really wanted to role play the hell out of it tonight, we can do an initial terminal on every single thing we touch when we pick it up. Uh, for time's sake, I'm gonna say no. Uh, but we should we should absolutely do a set and release. Uh, make sure you get cotton make sure we're getting continuity all the way through um Holt 588 you can't just crack the last angle cock what if someone left it bottled um so that's uh that's why you can't just do that all right I know 
assets out of the yard there. Let's beat the piss out of the engine a little bit and uh, get back on to what we were doing. Uh, HRC Saxon Hale brake test. We just hook it all up and hope to God it works. Uh, Colt 588 says, well, don't work in my yard. <laughs> hey, you, you know, I'm not the FRA. I didn't, I didn't see anything. Yes, we, we didn't make up the rules. In this instance. No, not in this instance. Is, here's another one for you. Is local actually defined within any of the operating structures? Or is that just a, a general railroading term applied to something that is doing work between terminals? So... I have yet to find where that kind of came from, and I was doing a lot of research for this one, because um, it's it's uh you know like I, I I've done the freight thing, I've done the local stuff, but like I, I haven't really known about it per se, um you know kind of like the the history of the job, the history of the work, um so I couldn't find anything of like where the local came like where where like the local is listed like how does how does one define a local other than just like knowing what the um the train symbol is for the local train for the the local you know freight local we're not talking passenger lo local so i i don't know i've been, i was trying to find that out while i was also doing a massive amount of research of uh, where drilling came from as a railroad term going out for you got your drill list, your switch list. So, and we'll we'll talk about that later. Cause spoilers. Um, but I I couldn't find anything. Uh, looked through my history books. Looked through. I was looking at like UPs, like um, UPs and CSXs, Western Pacific's, NS's definitions page on their website. Could couldn't find. And it was just like local a train that a train that serves um industries uh around a terminal um so it's i don't know which there too sometimes the local is something that is based out of a single terminal and sometimes it's something that travels between two terminals um c-o-p-t-m coptum uh believe locals uh, have to start and end at the same terminal but has to leave the 25 mile switching limits uh, I don't know, that's, maybe that's a rule now I don't know I, I am trying to, I am actively trying to learn more about this so if you know more, if you have some good books send them my way I, I appreciate a good book rec um, it's a, uh, yeah I don't know, I, I wish I had a better answer uh, but I am, I am endeavoring to learn more as I can And that's the case with so many of these things, is that they've become such a staple of railroad parlance that it's difficult to actually trace where did the thing start. Yeah, it's like it's just always been a thing. So where where did it come from? Uh, you know, it's, it's a name that's been passed down from my old heads, from their old heads, from their old heads. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, railroads have some good written history, uh, but not a lot. So, th there's some good information out there, there's some bad information. Um. Key word in there, too, is written, which written, is to yeah. say that if it's documented in some obscure book that people aren't knowing or going back to, you can't just search for the key frame the, the the key term like you would with the internet or with digital archives and so many railroad books massive pet peeve of mine so many railroad books are out of print that 
there's not good record keeping of what all exists. Like we might know that the book exists, but we don't know what all what knowledge that book contains other than sort of the headlining features. Exactly. Um, it's mm, railroad books are a weird thing. I, I wish there were better books out there. There are some good books out there. A really good D and H book out there. That's hard to find. Um, but it's yeah. uh. Yeah, I wish there was more written history now. Um, that's, I don't know, talking, you know, talking with the old heads. That was something I always wanted to do was like, I want to put you in front of a movie camera and just the have you is, talk. Yeah, the key is getting the talkative ones because there was somebody that uh, you introduced me to recently. Uh, and I, I had, and I, I was, interested to meet him because you told me oh he's an experienced head and we we did a run together and i barely like he barely talked at all so i'm sure he has great knowledge but i didn't get to learn any of that i I know exactly who you're talking about and yeah he is not a talkative person um even when he's uh instructing interesting yeah it's uh it's it's weird (laughs) I, i try not to think about it too much I mean, uh, but, that, but like, so it's great because, like, when you do get like a like when like people like that do talk, it's usually an absolute gem that kind of just falls out of your mouth that makes you stop and think. You're like, huh, ah, uh, that's wow, and it it kind of changes the way you go about things. I'm seeing cries from our students. For a VRA written book. What am I? I don't know what I'd write a book on. Or I. Uh, At least I, I feel like I'd have more to learn than to, to contribute. I yeah I, I don't know what I'd write a book on. I don't have enough experience. I mean I've I've only just recently done another round of operations at uh, the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. Oh which can is I? Fun, but that was. But that's not enough to write a book on. I, uh, I mean, I did. I learned some things that I could contribute to a book, but not enough experience for a book. In yeah, I, I don't think I have enough experience to write an operations book. Uh, I, I, I can, I, I know some stuff. I don't know everything, uh, I, so I don't. I don't feel like I'm the right person to write a book. Can I use um, your trolley experience as a really bad segue? Please. Since I've already made this a bad segue. Uh, was at IRM for Showcase Weekend this past weekend. And, oh, yeah. oh my god, what an absolutely amazing event. 36 hours, non-stop running. Um, got to ride an inner urban car for the first time. Um, oh, you had done that before. Huh. No, I've never ridden a trolley. I've never ridden an inner urban car. Watching, those, watching the traction motors arc at night is freaky. Um, what's even freakier is doing like 45 miles an hour down the IRM main in the dark in a in an uh, inner urban car. It was the cool. We had the very front seats. It was very cool, but also like this is this is a little creepy. Oh yeah, trolleys at night oh. are totally different experience than during the day. Totally different. All right. I hope we don't go on the ground here. I was gonna say that is a. Uh... We are we are hot rodding it into this siding. Uh yeah no I, I had a clear at the last signal, um and then a uh, a diverging restricting here. Uh, so, we need to bring in our, our faithful dispatcher to uh, um, interrogate him about this. On the note of dispatcher, if, if you or uh, you know anyone out at IRM, I am very interested in learning more about their signaling system because I heard it was all CTC. I kind of want to know more about that. I saw some weird signals that didn't make sense to me. Um, I, I want, I would like to learn more about that. So if if you are or know anyone who is involved out there and can hook us up, I have questions. So you're saying you got some mixed signals from them? I did get some mixed signals. Gotcha. Um. Let's see. No, we there was no scent of Kenosha here. We're happy to report. Um, there was briefly sp- a whiff, but uh, it, it's gone away. Yeah. 
And uh, Holt, uh, anyone know when Pittsburgh and Ohio Central is going to hire conductors again? I don't know. That's a G&W property. Actually, they go right back to the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. So they, that's also kind of nifty experience where, where you have trolleys um, on weekdays that are going right next to the local. Speaking oh, of that's locals, cool. uh, hey, I brought it back to local. We've, we've segued back around. Look at us. Yes, yes. <laughs> have, uh, running, running trolleys right next to... Uh, a local freight that's uh, switching. I think it's a plastics plant. Is their neighbor? Okay, that. that's pretty cool. I, I like it when um, tourist stuff can interact with the freight side of things, and um, we uh, and and you kind of get to see like the other side of the world. Um, I think it's interesting from an operations perspective, and it's also in interesting from like a what do the passengers get to see kind of perspective. Mm hmm Especially if there's interchange. The the one mm -hmm. that. It strikes me as particularly uh, interesting in that regard is the Conway Scenic, which has a, a freight connection to the outside world that I gather is rarely used except when the Conway Scenic is getting or sending out equipment, hmm. plus car storage, if I understand correctly. Hmm. Um, so yes, yeah, always interesting when you have those kinds of uh, relationships. Oh, very cool. Uh, or things like Steamtown, where you've got um, the the park service running trains out on the main, uh, coordinated with Delaware Lackawanna freight runs. Yeah, them. there's not a lot of places actually. I can think of where you get to witness that from a from a passenger perspective. No. Um, Everett maybe. Do they run freight when they're running passenger trains? I don't think so. I think their freight stuff is mostly during the week. They might have to, I mean, the only exception to that is that sometimes they might, on the tail end of a day, like with, before or after their operations, I think they might do some switching. Because I saw a photo recently from where the crew was using their steam engine to switch cars. Hmm. Um, and they, presumably would have fired up the scene I mean, for excursions, so I think that they it was, I, I, but I, I can't recall seeing cases of where they have their, their Saturday trip to wherever uh, and passing their jeeps doing freight service um, uh the 11 pulls the interchange uh, yeah here we got from 67 the 11 pulls the interchanges from time to time based on crew availability after passenger runs there we go that's what i was seeing that makes sense okay yeah so i guess uh, steamtown your trolley museum um we have no freight interactions um nope. yeah i can't really think of anything that that has it huh yeah i i mean unless it's sort of the entity does both, a la Reading and Northern. Yes, well, that's... that's Reading and Northern is a special, uh... They, they they're, they're, they're a special case. case. Yeah. yeah. Uh, dispatcher, if you're out there, I take it once this train clears, we can depart. Oh, look at that. Someone's getting their switches remotely for us. Here we go. Yeehaw. Alright, so I'm I'm looking over our train. And I see we have Stenzel. We've got these unwavelled cars for the... The, the t sub track that's eventually going to have an industry. So I'm just making something up for this evening to be able to talk about a thing. Uh, and it looks like we have an Ella car on the rear. So I'm going to say we bypass the sawmill... Uh, and go straight into uh, Whittier proper into the hole. And we deal with these cars. Sound reasonable to you? Mm-hmm. I can dig it. Well, uh, we'll swap and I'll talk about uh, approaches. I'm just realizing, too, you made uh, the chatbot less sensitive because I'm not seeing as many redacted messages. I, uh, I turned it off. Oh, okay, that works. I think the only thing it, uh... I think it's only watching out for link spam. So I, uh, I, I turned it all the way down. 
Yeah. So was... no fear about your your messages being too long today, folks. R write the great American novel as you see fit. And we're uh, back to books. Yes. <laughs> we are. Yeah. So yeah, it's difficult to think of. I mean, now now it begs the question: if one wanted to see something that was a steam-powered local, not a photo charter, where would one go to see it? I mean, I'm going to throw that out to I'm going to expand that even more to if one wants to see freight going on while you're at a tourist railroad, where would one go to? Uh, let us know in the comments if you know. Yeah, we're... No, they built that whole new thing. So well, that way they, they don't need to, yeah. like... Th that's... They have their whole new transload facility, so they don't need to run into town anymore. Yeah, I guess that's true. I think the SW lives up there up now. Running? That is up and uh, running. Yeah, okay. there was a. I saw some great drone footage of a 475 drilling it one time. Oh, cool. Um, well, let us know if you know. We're. we're I'm interested. I'm, uh, I'm, I'd be down to do a rail fan trip. Belleville? No, we don't. No, there's no Saturday train. It's um. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Or Tuesday, Thursday, I think. And it depends. Um. Oil Creek does run freight, but do they run freight at the same time they run passenger? Yes, they do. That's a good one. Very good. Oh, don't uh, they have, like, an Alco T6 or something? No, they have two S2s and a an M420. Close um, enough. But, yes. I've actually been on, so yes, I could say I've traveled on a mixed train. A couple of oh, times. We, we talked about this during the mixed train stream. Yes, where, where uh, OCNT, yes, they, uh, um, yeah, they'll sometimes take freight cars with them on their excursion runs. Um, yes, and they do do freight, uh, 67, uh, usually during the week days. Um, like, especially, like, the switching that they'll do in Titusville. But Titusville, they have a, a good amount of customers. In fact, that's the opportunity that you can see them use the the line that goes closer to the center of town, which rarely sees passenger stuff on it. That's when you can see the great stuff there. Uh, Rocky Mountaineer in Canada is good. They go through the Canadian Rockies. Uh, I mean, that's a passenger service on a typically freight line. But not... Wait, what we're getting at? Um, yes, I said do do. I don't uh, have mm -hmm. any regrets. Um, but yes, that that it is an exceedingly rare breed where you can point and be like, oh, there's an outfit that does both. Which, but I I think that could change because as Strasbourg is shown over the past 15 years, you can, if you choose to emphasize that you do this a particular business, then you can grow it into quite a sizable thing. I heard, uh, actually, we covered it on the podcast because one of uh, Steve Weaver, I forget his, what his title is, but he's been at Strasbourg for decades, and he talked about the freight business uh, on the Roundhouse podcast. Hmm. Uh, hashtag shameless plug uh, roundhousepodcast.com search Strasbourg you'll see a bunch of my episodes including an interview with Lynn Modinger um, 611 visit but also um, there's an episode about their freight business um, and they talk about um, and that was before I don't know if the transload facility was a work in progress at the time or not because this was back in 2018 so that might have predated before the I think the facility yeah, I was, think like that was a, before there was gleam in there like a last high. year thing yeah, so so that that's them talking about it from a logistical standpoint at that stage. Um, but it gives you an interesting insight into it. Um, oh, there's a train ahead of us. Yeah, more air. We're, we're just out full of all sorts of surprises tonight. It's like, hey, we're rolling along, and oh, there's a thing that we weren't expecting. Uh, Arcade and Attica... Yes, I, yeah. I mean, they do uh, both uh, freight and pasture rarely uh, together, unless they're doing special trips. Like, they sometimes do uh, run the center cabs to um, well, not center cabs North anymore. Java. 
Right, well, I mean, they still have them. They're just not going to be as frequently used. But yes, historically, up until very recent history, historically speaking, um, that was the means of uh, switching. Kind of an interesting one at that. So yes, you, there's a there's a Taurus rabbit that has a sizable freak distance. So sizable, they had to that their the center caps were in a nothing, so they had to get them out. There. All right, let me know when my uh, hind end is clear back there. It is clear. Oh wow, we're well, much shorter than I expected. Yep. All right. So let us. Oh no, I meant to the second siding. Oh, sorry. I, I'm getting used to the new track arrangement. Yeah, um, two cars. All right, two cars. One car. One. And did you want to do the pickups or setouts first? I don't know. I'm going to get on the ground and see what we got going on. You're in the clear. All right. Let's go ahead and get Stenzel taken care of first. Uh, and then we'll come in and take care of the uh, the oil dealer uh, here in town. Okay. Should we be good stewards and not block the crossing or... Uh... Yeah, it's fine. I don't see any traffic. Uh, I don't see any traffic either. All I was right. Gonna say. Your engine. Heat oak. All right. Uh, Pins pulled. You're clear ahead. Now we're just going to be out hanging out here switching for a while. The corn doctor must be an orange hat asking <laughs> the engineer on how <laughs> to do the job. Well, no, we swapped. We're, we're both cross qualified. Two cars. True. One. Half. Truck. And far enough, you're lying. Let's go back. And as uh, as they say on one railroad here in the northeast, you got a long five to a hook. <laughs> if you right. know, you know. Um. So uh, we're we're looking at a a couple of different moves here. Well, uh, there were cars to pull out the sawmill. We skipped over that because that was a facing point switch move. Um, in that we would be on the wrong every wrong end of everything to do the move. Um, so we skipped over that one because we know we need to go to Dillsboro or Bryson, pick up more cars that are going back this way. And that's our turnaround point. So we're skipping over that industry to be able to deal with it on our way back east. At least that's how I like to run this job. Uh, crossing's clear and protected. <laughs> Keep shoving. Uh, switch the line for us. So we're skipping over that. Uh, we're now dealing with a, a trailing point move here. Because um, we're uh, pulling off, shoving in, and we can trail through the switch that we need to go through. So trailing point move, it's a little bit wonky because it's on a runaround track, but it's still trailing point. Uh, two cars to a hook. One car. Just taking my safety stop. There you go. Uh, half a car. Ten feet. Five feet. Three. Two. And got him. Alright, we'll be good stewards. We'll, uh, we'll make sure we got air out of here on the angle cock. We do. 
And uh, you are clear ahead. Uh, Holt says, I was in the engineer's seat all day today, but as soon as the rest of my crew ate like $40 worth of food, I was getting kicked out of the seat so one of them didn't have to walk anymore. <laughs> Funny how that works out. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad. I kind of forget to eat when I'm running. Um, just because like, I'm, I'm thinking of so much other stuff. But I just, I just kind of forget like that I'm hungry. Um, it, it's a problem. But uh, the guy I used to work with said that a steam engine is just a giant picnic bench. And uh, all you do is eat and work. Uh, so I, I like that. Alright, uh, okay. I see Rudy changing signals here. So that's... Uh, there we go. The magic of what is happening before our eyes. Uh, you know what goes on behind the scenes here that no one else sees. Mm -hmm. uh, three cars to a stop. Two. One. Half. Five. And far enough. Let's, uh, kick these three back, okay? Mm hmm You have your brakes released? No, I did. Oh, yes, this is one of the shortcuts. One of the shortcuts? One of the shortcuts to switching. That's right. I'll put this down. Kicking cars. It's still legal. Do it. It's more fun. Flying switches. Illegal. Don't do them. But they are fun. Far enough. I'm just gonna ride this cut in. Get my far enough, Nick. You gotta go ahead, uh, five feet to clear the points. Uh, here I thought I was getting clear. I've been practicing my, my gathering skills, though. I've been playing a lot of open rails lately, which, from a physics standpoint, is a very solid game. It, yeah, and, I'm very impressed by open rails. And Far enough. I'm running their, the newest... Um, it's the Shasta... Uh, what's the division name? I think it's part of the Roseville division. All right, division clear back. Of Southern Pacific. Um, point being mountain railroading so I'm always thinking about gathering my cars for these long heavy freight trains and that is a game where you could really feel that you are gathering the cars up oh taking out the slack yep yeah yeah it's a it's amazing how well you can feel it um and like sadly once you're tuned into it you cannot untune to it especially when you go other places um so, like, it, it's just the thing you kind of constantly notice. Well, looks like we got another train coming through here, too. It does. Looks like we got the, I think this is the, the coal, the coal one, coal drag coming through town. I, I don't know if I would call that a drag. With the way that is moving. It's, uh, I would... uh hustle. Yeah, uh, um... Coal hustle. Hopper jet, I think would be the right word. Oh, there we go. That works too. Uh, Alright, you're uh, crossing clear sick cars. Uh, two cars? Uh, one car. Don't worry, I'm giving you more. He 
keep her coming half a car. Just like this. Another quarter car, keep her creeping. Fifteen feet. Ten. Five. Four. Three. Two. Good enough. We're here. Just, uh... Do that. Set that. And get that. Alright, we're cut away. Clear ahead. Alright, we're gonna go to the switch uh, down here for the runaround, and uh, we'll run around our train and uh, grab those tank cars, okay? Works for me. Uh, the customer is not gonna call and complain that the spot was bad, 67, because that was an amazing spot. That was the spot by which all other spots are measured. It's fine. And you are far enough. Okay, back. I get that now. Uh, clear back. Uh, what is it? Cop term? Cop? C O P T R N? Um, I'm calling him Cop Turn. Cause cop Turn? That's that's what I think. Uh, cop Turn? No, the, with steam engines, you don't really shove against the brakes, because unlike a diesel, um, you have uh, almost complete variability in uh, how much power you are using with how the throttle is notched. So there's almost there's no need to shove against the brake because of how f how fine your control is. Alright, and you are far enough. Be sure you don't trip that signal. Alright, clear, clear ahead. I, I'm not able to make it much tighter than that. Yeah, no, we're gonna... You're clear ahead. Uh, one and a half to a hook. We're gonna have to get a... Uh, we're gonna have to get a permission from Rudy here to uh to fell the main to make our move. So uh, it, Rudy, if you're watching, we're gonna be fouling the main here. Yeah. Because we first stored it, and now we're gonna run it on the main line. All right, got that guy. And that cut. All right, you're clear to cut away. Uh, foul the main to make our move. I heard the dispatcher was called, but I didn't hear what you called me for. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna be fouling the main to make a move here. Uh, okay. You are the only thing out there at the moment, so you're good to go. Cool. Uh, I I figured since the signals haven't done anything in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once the coal train got by, there's nothing else out there, so. All right. Let me know when you're done. We'll do. Uh, we'll be heading your way uh, shortly this year. Uh, one car. Far enough. Okay, ahead. Sorry on the car counts. I was on the radio with the uh, the dispatcher. It's all good. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, that's one of the cool things about running steam, um, long five to a hook, is, uh, how, uh, uh, crossing clear and protect and keep shoving, is how variable, how fine control you have, uh, you can, I've moved the engine an inch before by popping the throttle to the snifter and then slamming it back shot. Uh, another five to a hook. So it's uh, it's it's cool how 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 nice of control you have. 
So uh, it's, uh, Steam's cool. I like Steam. And I like the fun things you can do with it. Now, if I was running a Jeep, I'd say, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a set and shove against that. Uh, four to a hook. Two. One. Long half. Ten feet. Five feet. Two. One. Bang. Got him. Well, thank God we didn't have a chalk there. Alright. Okay to pull. You you opened a can of worms there on the use of wor the fouling the main because now our students are making all sorts of bird related jokes. You know what? It could be worse. Tremendously. Okay, so our next move here is going to be we're going to clear the switch. We're going to shove these outbounds up onto the siding. Uh, we're going to come back it. in, do our kick. Uh, grab our outbounds, put the train back together, and go from there. Sound good? Here's a question. Yes. It sounds good. My question. We're going across this grade crossing over and over and over again. Three to a stop. Two. One. Half. So we're going over this crossing over and over again. What's the protocol as far as horns, bells, whistles? One and far enough. All right. Uh, you know, let's kick these hazmat cars. Uh, they're they're empty. Let me know when you're released. All right. Okay, to shove. So, uh. If you're using that crossing a lot, you gotta blow every time. You gotta ring the bell every time. Um, everyone in the oh. town's gonna think you're annoying. Far enough. But it's what you gotta do, unless there's some ordinance that says otherwise. So uh, gotcha. it's, those are the kinds of things that usually uh, get you uh, get you know quiet zones created because of constant back and forth switching. Alright, we're just gonna do that. Alright, we'll do our next kick with these uh, three down into the industry. Let me know when you're released. Released, here we go. Air's bottled. Okay to shove. Right, now, see, this is where it's nice to have both a conductor and a brakeman. Because you, now you, you can have someone ride the shove uh, and stop this. And far enough. You are going to have to roll back to clear that switch. I know. Okay. Uh, so you could have someone who's riding the cut flying in. Um, and you can have someone else who's taking care of you getting uh, you made back up to those cars. So this is where having a you know, three-man crew is nice. Alright, and... Pop the air. So now these guys are set out. I'm gonna sprint back up here. Uh, you still have a quarter car, half a car to clear a switch. Alright, fair enough. Clear to shove ahead. We'll call it four to a hook. Okay. Yeah, but the times that should be a five to six man crew. I uh, have, yeah, yeah. Steam, yeah, we're steam. We'd have a four. We'd have a definitely a four-man crew, if not four, five-man. Yeah. 
Uh, two cars. It's nice when you get to work on a full crew like that. Uh, where, where you're working with, you know, three, four people, um, doing switching that way. Uh, it's always nice to be able to have, you know, conductor, uh, and got him. Sorry. Uh, conductor is, air's made up, clear back, uh, we're gonna foul the main again, uh, get our switching done. Cause I don't think we ever, uh, reset that from before, no. So we'll, we'll foul the main, get our train made back together, run around, and, uh, call it the dispatcher. But I was saying, you know, four-man crew, it's nice, you've got the conductor who takes care of cutting cars away, and you use your brakeman as, um, uh, riding cars, and also, um, switch pitch, to, uh, stand there and throw switches as needed. So, uh, it's, it's nice when you have those, when you have that crew. Uh, and, you know, I've done stuff like that where you're doing it all on hand signals and the conductor gives the engineer the backup and the train starts rolling back and points up to the brakeman standing up by the switch of like, hey, it's your move, uh, three cars to a stop. So, you know, you're, you're throwing the move away by pointing and then the brakeman starts giving hand signals of like, all right, come on, keep backing up, keep backing up. Or, you know, fist pumps of like, all right, four fist pumps, four cars. Far enough. So it's, it's cool when you get to work on crews like that, where you can hand off stuff. Um, that's something I try and teach a new brakeman, um, is the handoff maneuver. How do you hand off a hand signal to someone else so the engineer knows who, who they're supposed to be looking at? A uh, long five to a hook. Cross and clear and protect it, keep showing. One one car. Half a car. Ten feet. Five feet. Two one. Got him. Alright. We're not fouling over here, so let's get you cut away. Pins pulled. Top turn says can't get fired if the manager can't hear you on the radio and you're using hand signals. This is true. That's all. I like true. hand signals. Hand signals are a fun way to do the work. Um, I'm waiting for the day there's a game with like emotes to be able to give hand signals. I think that'd be really cool. And far enough, clear ahead. Uh, get our switches back to normal here. Suppose I'll be proper and right on your side. So that way you can see me up here giving you the go ahead. And we use East Coast hand signals on this railroad. Not that back assword west coast stuff from Mark's latest video. I heard that call out, Mark. Um, it's a, you East Coast know, is where it's at. East Coast hand signals do make so much more sense. Um, and hand signals are just, uh, they're fun to use. I like, I like doing as much as I can with hand signals. You can really start to communicate very small detailed information with hand signals, uh, especially when you're, you've are you been on a crew for a while. Engine length. Tender. And far enough. You're lined back. Okay, back uh, two cars to a hook. So I, I can give you really detailed information with hand signals uh, and how fast I do them and how small I do them and how big I do them, I can let you know. You know, if I'm doing really big, really fast hand signals, that means, hey, you, you've got a big distance to go, you, you can go quick. Um, if I start bringing those closer together, smaller movements, uh, that's all right. We're getting ready to start slowing down. We're getting ready for an easy. And then you can bring your hands up, out as like a whoa there easy. 
And then keep coming. A little more, a little more. Far enough, and got him. Um, as crazy as this sounds, I was doing hand signals the entire time for that move. Um, cause I'm... I understood that. I'm insane. Okay. Um, wobble, those aren't, uh, those aren't, um, nav signals. Those are marker lamps. Uh, I grew up on a Pensy Road. They always ran marker lamps on the back of their steam engines. And they lit them, so that's what I do. But I don't like the pensy, so I don't like. I don't know why I do it. I just think it looks nice. Um, and uh, you like their lights. I, I like lamps. Lan lanterns they're are big, nice. They're big old marker lamps on the front end. Uh, that they put on the pilot. Yeah, that's cool. A lot of reverence did that. Got to do a lantern video at some point. Um. But uh, this is a deal two to dispatch. Whenever you can uh, come around, we'll creep up to the signal, Nick. Mm -hmm. we'll, uh, we'll stop fouling poor Whittier downtown crossing here. Yeah, as you can see, we have... The traffic have... is backed up for miles. I, I think I saw 10 grasshoppers waiting to cross. One of them gave me the middle finger. <laughs> Which is impressive since they don't even have fingers. Um... So, but uh, how you can communicate with hand signals, um, tying back to that, you can you can really communicate a lot um, in what you do. And if you work with a crew long enough, work with the same guys long enough, you end up speaking the same language or the same dialect of the same language. Um, working with one guy where like we knew anytime we were doing moves that I'd give him a backup, and then if you take your fist. And extend it all the way out like you're punching the air. However many times you punch the air is however many cars you want to go. So he knew that I'd give him, all right, back him up, and then I'd pump my fist, like however many cars I needed. So we'd we'd work like that, and I wouldn't start giving like a backup signal until we were within two cars. So once I gave him two cars, all right, back him up, and then I give him one car. And I'd give him a half, which is you take your elbow and you punch the air, and then that's when I'd resume regular hand signals again. And we we work together like that a bunch. Um, to this day, I love being able to. And you know, I'll drop brief that out with guys that I work with now, since not working with the same guy all the time anymore. Of like, all right, hey, like, I'm not gonna stand there on. I'm not gonna stand there hanging off the car, hanging off the tender, for five cars just giving you a backup. I'm, I'm gonna give you a backup, then I'm gonna give you a car count with my fist. And it's, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, you have a visual on the signal up there yet? Yep, I see that. Yes, and okay. it's clear, so uh, that's why I'm not slowing down. Alright, copy that. Makes your communication more efficient. It does. Uh, and it doesn't make your arm tired. That's That's the other key thing when you're hanging on to cars all day and you decide I'm gonna let's do hand signals all day to be fun and unique um so yeah. do hand signals they're fun but and unique. Um, and unique but th they get tiring after a while I don't know I'm I'm dumb and I like old school things uh, when I do when I was doing freight, so I, I try to do hand signals as much as possible. I kind of hate using the radio. You do. I do. But you can talk in like full sentences. Yeah, but you can give me a full sentence with a hand signal, and I fell off. Uh, well, switch is switch is normal. I'm I'm back on. I'm gonna sit down I so I don't fall over. Suppose I should go, go sit up in the cupola here, instead of at the table. I'm there. That we is go. A nice view. There we go. I see. No, it's not bad. Um, yeah, I, I don't like using the radio, um, especially, you know, brakeman. Yeah, like I, I'll use a radio. I, it's easier than a hand signal most of the time. But as an engineer, I hate using the radio because you're trying to use all of your hands, and when you're trying to mm. use throttle independent reverser it's you kind of end up like in a jam um of like 
trying to like reach behind you, grab the radio and key it, or like you have it like off the hook and it's like hanging in front of you, and you gotta like s chase the cable up and get and grab the uh, click and go. Uh, yeah, uh, fourteen two Roger, ahead. Um, two cars. I find it's easier if I'm doing that to just do what I'm doing, grab the whistle, toot toot, and keep doing what I'm doing. It's it's a faster move. Just reach up, grab it, bla hit it twice, and keep going. I can understand that. That does make a degree of sense. Just one degree of sense. Uh, 67 recommends you just use your third hand. I haven't evolved to have that yet. Uh, I'm waiting on that upgrade. I think most of us are waiting on that upgrade. <laughs> I'm certainly uh, not there. Well, I gotta say, we've gotten that move done very quickly. No, we, we're, we are, we're doing quite well in our progression of work. We are. Um, as we make our way to Ayla. We, oh, that's right, we have the we have the Ayla card of the OF. I totally forgot about that. Oh. That's on, uh, that's, that's all the way here next to the hack. Well, at least it's in a convenient spot. I would have preferred it's up by the head end, but I'll... I, I just got pushed through a wall. But convenient for you because you're already back there is what I meant. Yes. Convenient for me because I'm back here. Uh, the Goose Man says two toots from the whistle always had seemed like a a, a firm to me. Uh, that, that's literally what it means. Too short is a, is a uh, affirmative response to any signal not otherwise specified. So it's a it's a nice little, yeah I got you. Here we go. Uh, you know if someone's someone's standing there, uh, on the other end of the other end of the train, you're running around giving you the backup signal. You you do two short blasts to be like, yeah I got you coming back. Here we go. It's it's just a yes signal. Like we have a card to pick up as well. Possibly. Ooh. Uh, yep. All right. Uh, I don't know where we're gonna spot this. Is there a reason your throttle still all the way open? Because I haven't backed it down yet. Okay. Uh, and we can stop anywhere in here because we're about to blow by it. Beautiful. We'll make this work. All right, clear ahead. Passenger stop there. Uh, Holt588 says we stuck our hand mic next to the horn with a magnet. So that way you can blow the horn directly into the microphone? Uh, or easier to use the microphone. Or you're startling somebody? Yeah, two cars. Either way, I like the idea. One car. Half a car. Truck. Far enough. Okay to shove back. Um, okay to shove back. Uh, long five to a hook. That guy meant sounded. Sounded? Oh, two tweets oh, from the whistle always had a... Uh, it sounded, sounded like, like a, an affirm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, think, I you, get what you're saying, like the yeah, syllable. No. Yeah, no, either way, that uh, that sentence made sense. But yep. yes. Am I correct that both of those are good to be lifted? Just one. We're only grabbing the box. Uh, whatever is back there still hasn't uh, still hasn't been uh, unloaded yet. Well, at least it's uh, one car. Nearest us. Half a car. Five, four, three, two. Got him. 
Ow. It was less than five miles an hour. That wasn't too bad. Hands falls clear ahead. See, I got a... In the cab, I have a magnet that I use that I clip my orders and everything to, and I stick it on the nearest piece of metal. Um, I like using that to hold my stuff down. Uh, that, or I have this vest that I use when I'm brakeman that has a little pocket that I can put my switch list in and strap the radio to right in front of me, and it kind of sits like right across your chest. Um, so I like using that half a car to a stop. Ten. Far enough. Let me know when you got a recharge. We'll uh, we'll kick this box down on top of the hack. Copy that recharge. Pin's been pulled. Kick him. Far enough. And a head, half a car. Uh, Copturn wants to know if it's common practice uh, in Steam to bottle the air. Oh yeah, it was far enough. Up to the 60s people were bottling the air. Alright, let me know when you have a recharge. We'll uh, kick this uh, car into the siding. Copy that. Anglecock's closed, pin pulled. Kick. Far enough. And uh, six, 6777 found a conductor's missing switch list from the day before. Never let him live that down. Good, you shouldn't. I, I, I would expect a good old-fashioned ribbing from doing something like that. Alright, switch line clear back, four to a hook. Two cars to a hook. I mean, technically modern day, if you're gonna kick a car, uh, one car, half a car. I'm giving absolutely horrendous car counts today, cause I am trying to do too much. F Ten, five, two, one. Me. Got him. All right, pop that angle cock. Pop that angle cock. Technically, you're supposed to close the angle cock, bleed the air off of that car, um, and then you're allowed to kick. All right, uh, deal two to dispatch. Are you out there? Can you hear me? Rudy! Can you hear me calling? Hey, Bueller. Hey, uh, are we clear to depart? Yes, you are. Copy uh, that. You will have a meet uh, either in Governor's Island or Bryson. I'm trying to figure that out right now, uh, but watch your signals. Copy that. Um, we can take all of our stuff back with us. Uh, if you just want to pluck the uh, Andrews cars off when we get in. And we'll yeah, pick we up do. the rest of the Whittier stuff and we'll take you everything back. Yep, you have four cars for Whittier going back with you. So. Copy that. Here we go. Hi, Ball Nick. Okay. So just uh, keep an eye on our signals. We have a meet somewhere. Question mark. Yes. And I am still here. There was a fear that I had disappeared, but I am very much here and alive. Uh, yeah, I am glad we still have you. Glad I still have me. I don't know what I'd do without me. I don't know what I'd do without you either, friend. Um, so old days, you know, close the angle cock, bottle the air. Now, now we have rules specifically, uh, forboding, forbidding it, forboding it, forbidding it. Do we have an English uh, major in the house? 
I don't know if we have an English major in the house, but we have a different... Wait, no. That's not a thing. Never mind. Carry on. Okay. Alright, well, so we've done done all of our work going west. Now we're going to deal with all of the industries that are um, that were facing point for us, meaning we were facing the switch heading at them. So we're going to take care of all of those when we go back east. So we're going to get into Bryson, quick turn our engine. Uh, yard job's going to make up uh, make up our train for the return, and uh, we're going to get the heck out of Dodge. That's how this is going to work. Hopefully the yard doesn't stab us. No, and that's a uh, hopefully that's a rare term other people have heard uh, getting getting stabbed in reference to um, another crew, another train, uh, the dispatcher, um, kind of screwing you over, making you late, whatever, holding you. You got you get stabbed. Oh, we're about to get stabbed in an interesting way because that intermediate was approached. So yep. We're gonna have to stop outside of Governor. Uh, now, if that's an approach, that should mean that we have a... Oh, oh, we are going to have less than clear go uh, at Governor's Island. Okay. Signal spawn. Indeed. It is. Um, there's a bunch of cool railroad terms I picked up working the local. Um, well working with the old heads um, who had all these stab you know getting stabbed was one of them uh, drill was another one which uh, seems to be a thing that um, isn't really used anymore from what I can tell um, when going around trying to find the history of the word drill what I f uh, found out is mostly it's used as to reference the drill track now or your yard lead um, or a lead at an industry to uh, drill from but uh you know, the way I always taught it, drill is another word for switching from the old heads. Um, you know, you got your drill list, um, it, which is synonymous with your switch list. Um, you've, uh, the local job is drilling out the yard. Uh, I gotta go drill out Whittier Sawmill. Um, and, uh, you know, this is another word that when I'm prepping for this one, I couldn't really find a lot of information on. Um, what I think it means is I think, I think it's referencing um, a physical drill of like you're going in you're t you're taking a cut out of something and you're coming back and you're coming back out um, that's that's the only thing I can gather uh, if someone out there knows the history of the word drill in reference to railroading please let me know I just know that it's, it was used a lot when I was coming up and my friends out on uh, uh, other railroads um, short lines scattered around the country have heard the word drill as well from uh, the old heads they grew up with. I wonder if it's more basic than that, though, because I think of the colloquialism of, you know the drill, you know the process, and so I'm wondering if it's related to that in some oh, way. Oh, maybe. Processing, like the idea that this is where you conduct work. Maybe. That could be it. Uh... There's our passenger flag. Cop turn? Uh, yes. Drill and switch instead of shunting. Uh, in the States, shunting is what happens when you, uh, when you knock down a signal. Or, uh... Or go across- or trigger a crossing. You- you shunt the, uh, the switch. Um... You, you shunt the circuit. Uh, in the States, we use switching or drill. Um, so th those two are synonymous with each other. Probably um, not related to screwdrivers. That, probably that not feel, related to screwdrivers. That we feel quite comfortable on. Yes. I, I, you know, I... I like you... Drill, I think, has a very... Yeah, like, you can't just say... You can't just say, like, I'm going out for the drill. Uh, I'm taking DL2 out for the drill. Because um, that just doesn't sound right. Um, versus the, uh, versus like, ah, yeah, no, DL2, we gotta go out and switch the industry. Um, we, we, you know, switching job. 
Um, it's, it's not a drilling job. I, I like drill list. Um, I, li I like, oh yeah, what, what do you, what's your drill? Um, I, I like phrases like that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think drill needs to be used in a very specific way in order for it to work in the railroading context. And the old heads always seem to use it the right way. I, I never quite picked up on um, how to use it right. Um, and it's most definitely not a southern thing. I learned this from the good old Erie boys up in New York in Jersey. Some Lehigh Valley guys, some CNJ guys. So it's, you know, I, I heard it from a bunch of Northeast people. Um, so it's that that's where I learned it. Some friends across the country have used that, have heard that as well. So, meh, I don't know. I just know that if anyone calls it shunting, it makes me, it, it just annoys me. It's you know we're, we're in the states. Let's let's use the correct terminology for what we use over here. Shunting means something very different. Right. Although I'm partial to shunting because I spend enough time uh, researching and foaming over British things to that when I do live streams on Great Train Layouts Live and I'm switching from from US to UK, I try to switch from switching to shunting. Um, you yeah, know, I'm I'm able to convert my brain based on like the context I'm talking about. Um, maybe that's an ADHD superpower. I don't know. Um, I just know that I, I'm able to convert it in my head based on where I need it and the context that I'm talking about. Um, like, you know, we, we were hanging out at uh, IRM this past weekend. We were looking, scrolling through our phones, looking at the news, waiting on the next train. Saw that um, an engine out of Gala out there had failed. And like, that that's not really a, that's not like really like an American term of like, oh yeah, no, the, the engine failed. That's, that's kind of a strictly British thing. Um, but being able to like hop into that terminology where it's appropriate and then hop back out, I think is a, is a fun skill. I agree. I, th I think it's fun that we have different terminologies on different sides of the pond. It is. Just don't call it shunting in the States. It's switching. With an, ap an apostrophe. We are going into the side. All right. So it looks like we got all the way lined into the yard. No, no, it's a six, uh, 67, 77. It's N apostrophe, not apostrophe N. But I like your spirit. He's got like 10. At, at least 10. It's a nin, 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 nin. All right. Uh, so I guess once we get stopped, Nick, I'll come up, cut you away. We'll go spin our power and uh, uh, get the heck out of Dodge. Do we need to refuel on anything? Uh, you tell me. You're up there on the engine. That's true. I should. Um... I just feel better if we grab some water. We might be okay on coal. What's, okay. what's the capacity on this thing on coal? Oh, I don't know. Seven okay. tons? Eight tons? They, they will, will... Does it does it not say on the back of the tender? Um, to look. I'll, uh, I'll run up that way. Where's my two camera? Oh, good, it's with the engine. I'll just I'll it just. It does not say on the back of the engine or tender. No, uh, no, it does not. Uh, I think we can stop anywhere in here. Yeah, we're all the way into the yard. Alright, you're cut away. Let's head on up to the uh, engine house there and uh, get us some fuel. I see you put your whistle on. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, we we definitely need water. That's why I said I, I'd feel more comfortable. Oh yeah, no, we 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 need some water in here. 
That's how we know we can do good work, I suppose. I'm gonna break the immersion here and go ahead and fly on up to the turntable. Get our switch. Oh, you wanna... Come on, isn't that just the nicest whistle ever known to mankind? Uh, no, that, that would be a uh, SP6 charm. Mm. Um, but you know, preferences. Uh, how about we spin ourselves around first and get water? Can do. All right. That or uh, an NNW hooter. Oh, I like the, I like the, the Redding CP. hoot. Um. Oh wow, that's. You know, it's been a while since I've ridden into this track in the cab. I didn't think I threw the switch. No, nope, I checked my points. That was something that was drilled into me during operator training. Is always check which way. Oh, your points oh, are always we call out switches on uh on our cabs, on our engines. And if you don't have someone in the cab with you, you have to say it over the radio. Good safety protocol. For it is. Her reasons. Oh, and we're not lined. Nope, we are not. All right, now you're lined up. And far enough. Guest right. All right, Ahead. Let's go fetch a pail of water. I'm gonna turn off that headlight that's shining at us. That uh, was. I'm like, is the sun setting? That was very. Yeah, no, that's that's uh. Somebody left the uh the headlight on on the uh. The, the, the injured uh SW over there. Oh, that SW is looking like it's seen better days. I'm sure we'll get an explanation for that after the stream. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a good story. There's a few good ones. I saw some re-railing action going on. Uh, yeah, that's uh, I I've missed those. All right, far enough. Oh, come on, man. You didn't give me a count. You you said far enough for the. You're not watching yourself. Uh, back. Uh, I'll call it 15 feet. I was giving you the hand signal. You didn't see that. Five. Shockingly, no. Four, three, two, one. Hey, there we go. Yay! I'll use the radio next time. Uh, Holt 588. Speaking of class one shenanigans, I'm waiting to hear back from CSX. I'm tired of switching the same yard every day. A prior military so the schedule really doesn't seem that bad to me yeah best switch of luck to you same, switch in the same yard every night and day yeah and best of luck in your class one endeavors hope you uh hope you hear back soon and get the job eat the shiny side up Yes, do, do in fact keep the shiny side up. 
the shiny, Look. occasionally painted three quarters in heritage side up. I like those, I, and I think I'm one of like the rare few out there who does. Uh, no, I I like them too. I, I'm not as perturbed as other are, others are about the lack of decoration on the cab. Yeah, I think um, it's a nice, unique take on how to do it. Yeah, and, uh, I I get it from a branding standpoint. Because, I, I mean, look, I love the NS approach. I love the full unit thing. Yeah. But I could also see a company saying, look, if somebody sees Virginian, they're not going to know what that, like a non-rail fancy Virginian, they're not going to know what that is. No, and it kind of works as like a yeah, fading yeah, into your heritage type of thing. Uh, which I think reads really well from an optics perspective. Look at us, we're talking about marketing and not trains. Well, we're talking well, about marketing uh, as trains. The, as the chief and grand poof of streamliner media, I'd probably be remiss if I somehow didn't <laughs> swing, swing in a, <laughs> a conversation of marketing in there. We didn't even get into talking into video production, but I can make that happen if we really try hard. All right, well, you are clear ahead. Um. Looks like Rudy's uh working on our train now, so we'll just we'll sneak up the lead and just kind of hang out out of the way. We can do that. We can stay conveniently out of the way. Uh, Flying Scotsman, that's a question for the Railroader Discord. Uh, same thing for you, Roadhog1234. Uh, those questions are best answered in the Railroader Discord, and not by us. Oh, I, this, I can't believe I didn't mention the foamery thing I did recently. I got mm -hmm. to see 611. Ooh! During its recent ferry move. Oh, uh, very cool. Goshen. So, being led by a diesel, but still... Scene 611, scene 611. Got some what? nice shots of it going through neighboring towns to where I live, which was fun. How close are you to where those uh, excursions are happening? Uh, within an hour. They're oh. pretty close. I may have to come down and visit. You're welcome to. It, it, they, uh, I mean, there's plenty of trips to choose, and especially I think if you avoid the first couple of weekends, which are undoubtedly going to be crazy, I think that it'll probably get a little calmer as their season wears on. Right, we should we should season. probably uh, hole up over here. Eat oak? Yeah. But yeah, so they were moving it with a few coaches, so got some nice shots. I think my favorite of the day being I... I uh, Norfolk Southern on the Shenandoah line has been replacing a lot of their old 100 plus year old uh, position lights. And so I got a shot of it going by. Some oh, of very the last cool. Standing. Yep. So I'm happy with that. It was a good day of it. So yeah, it'll be fun to see it uh, doing the trips between Goshen and Stanton. Nice, yeah, and no, I was, uh, I was su pleasantly surprised when I heard that was announced. Um, I don't usually get to do a lot of uh, rail fanning, but I've been making a point of it this year to uh, work less and be able to do that and be able to do rail fanning as I have time. Uh, trying to sneak in a uh, Reading and Northern uh, Fall Rambles trip well, there you uh, go. at some point as well. Um, just you know, I, I never get I, I get to miss all the cool stuff all year because I'm doing my own cool stuff so I'm trying to make a point of True. seeing cooler things out there I think you've got the right idea yeah I'm just it's, it, it's, it, it's a balance of things honestly as far as there's always so much stuff going on it's a, I mean you hearing you talking about the IRM thing Makes me realize, yeah, I probably want to do that some year, but it's always a matter of prioritizing. What what are the things I feel like I can? Seventy fifth anniversary. Get to this year. Uh, got to meet their chairman of the board of directors, mm -hmm. uh, former general manager, uh, a Mr. JDC introduced me to him uh, on my way out, and uh, 
he said their plan right now is to do it again at the 21st, at the 75th anniversary. Uh, and this was their 70th, because running for 36 hours straight is apparently um, kind of a scheduling nightmare um, okay. and an event planning nightmare. So uh, they're going to uh, go at it again in a couple of years, though I, I wish they do it every year. It was a very fun trip. I'd, I'd go back in a heartbeat. We're doing it every year because we're. Too, I was in. No, that they run till midnight every year. Oh. Uh, okay, they don't do thirty-six hours straight every year. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, but no, it's seventy-fifth. You're welcome to. Um, some of us are already talking about planning a big trip back out there for that. So. I need to get in that um, I partially because I really want to see the um, Iowa Traction Company, which isn't too far from there, all things considered. Hmm. Yes, no, you surprisingly need a lot of time to see all of the train stuff in IRM alone, and then just, uh, what do they call it, the Chi-Town area? It's the Chicagoland, I think is the word for it. Um, I think it's Chicagoland is like the regional name, like instead of Tri-State area, it's just Chicagoland. Uh, um, so, gotcha. you know, can t- definitely take your time, and there's a lot of cool stuff out there. Um. Just Chicago as well. Yes. Now, the last time I had to spend a considerable amount of time in the Chicago area was for the Joliet rocket trips that the 765 folks did. That was... Mm. Yes. That was super nice. I Number know. two on the event memories list was Joliet rocket. Yes. I I am sad that I missed that. Uh, um, so many yeah. great things. My favorite part, by far is I was able to do the boarding announcement for one of the trips to let people know to get back on the train. <laughs> so of course, I I went the full distance with it because this was like over Metra's because it was uh, Metra's uh, LaSalle Street Station. Yeah. So I, I went the full, like I was rehearsing in my head because I'd asked in advance if I could do this. So I was rehearsing in my head what I was going to say. And uh, in the podcast episode, hashtag shitless selfless uh, self-promotion, um, shameless self-promotion, um, there, there I recorded the, I put my recorder out in the station area so you could hear what it sounded like when I did the. Oh, that is, that is so cool. Yeah, that was, oh, that, that was great. I, I, I had it in my mind for a long time that that was going to be a senior that I was going to do is someday go over my high school's loudspeakers and do a train arrival announcement or departure announcement. So the fact that I got to do it in real life is even better than that. That is, that is very cool. So, All right, I'm just I'm days. hanging out here just observing Rudy's uh, switching here with the 1999. This is meditative. Uh, it's so, uh, just so watching the party moves. like that engine. Uh, I guess so. I'm curious what his next move is going to be. I've been trying to guess it in my head. Um, I guess he's going to kick the caboose up a track. Go back and stab onto the rest of the train. The rest of the cut. Pull that back out and uh, kick it on top of the hack. That's my guess at the move. Uh, but I don't... I don't know. I'm taking shots in the dark. And he might secretly be... Or, uh... He so might then, secretly be listening, or he's going to uh, take the idea and be like, "Oh yeah, that's what I intended to do." All or he's going to kick it all the way through and then step onto it once it rolls out the other end. Though that's it looks bold, like he's slowing. Not going that it fast. looks like it's slowing. It looks like he's slowing it down. I don't know. Ru- Rudy is a switching master. If you want to, just need to set up like a virtual virtual rail fan camera, and everyone can watch Rudy drill the yard one day. I thought that was funny. Virtual, virtual rail fan. Oh, it, it, it's lovely. It needs to be a thing. I love that. So, to our faithful audience, uh, did we cover all of your questions of locals and what they do? Or don't do. And did we think of more? Or yes. Uh, what did? And did we think of more places where freight and tourist railroad is alive? Yeah, I'm. I'm seriously interested in that. Um, I suppose you could widen the berth if you include car storage because there's some tourist railroads that do a fair bit of car storage. There like are. The, uh, 
yeah. Abilene in the Smoky Valley, which just <laughs> ran comic cars. With their Storing standard. comic cars? Yeah. Um, that could open up the field of options. Car storage please. I don't, you know, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm really interested in this now. I've tried to think of West Coast stuff too, because Easy Coast, Easy Coast people to forget West Coast stuff. Um, it, Nick, everyone's saying that. It seems like you're backing away from your microphone. Oh, I probably, well, I am, and I'm sort of mumbling, so. Dead. Um, I think Sierra Railroad. They definitely do uh, rail yeah, breaks, and because our, our good friend, uh, CA Railroader, who was on, um, they've, they've got, uh, some rail bike ops along with, um, along with their freight trains. Mm. Uh, not at the same time, because FRA sketchy. Um, but, you know, it's, I'm sure there's some kind of a crossover there. I think they may run some passenger trains, I don't remember. Um. Do dinner trains count as tourist apps? I, I would count dinner trains. In fact, that's one of my modeling projects for a future layout. I, I don't know if it, what size, I, I envision it as either a 4 by 8 or a switching layout, um, is a, a freight railroad that has a dinner train. Because I have, uh, about 10 years ago in HO scale, Walters released a fictional dinner train called the Dinner Bell. And I am unnecessarily obsessed with this random dinner train as in i got all the equipment i got the matching station i designed the logo in illustrator so i have the capability to make fictional menus um and do whatever i want with that logo as far as putting it on equipment or so forth i, got... I really want to go the distance with it but i don't know what that's going to look like yet i got very into uh railroad dining cars on my recent trip out um, mm. one thing I noted, like, IRM had a lot of dining car menus on display in their dining cars. So that way you can see, uh, you can see stuff. All right, you can start coming ahead. I'm going to lace up air while you're, uh, getting tied on. Um, and we did the breakfast train on the Zephyr, um, which was a lot of fun. Very good food, so yeah. I got very into the dinner train idea while I was away, and uh, just the railroad menus in general. I'd love to see like a railroad cookbook of like, it, you know, like everyone makes a chicken. Um, so like, meh. Like we, we don't need to go over uh, yet. We, we like you know we we don't need like Santa Fe chicken and Pennsylvania railroad chicken and uh, seaboard chicken. But like, what what like okay, give me one chicken recipe and then give me like the different sauces. I'd be very into that. And far enough, you're clear back. If only there was a society dedicated to dining cars. Wouldn't that be nice? I, w I would buy... Um... I would buy a book like that. Yes. Um... Gotta say, CB&Q French Toast. Very good. Wait, joking aside, you, you know that there is a railroad cookbook, right? No, I don't actually. Is there really? Oh, okay. Yes. Have our friends That's... have our friends done a railroad cookbook, and I'm just a terrible not, friend. Not those uh, friends. No. Five, um... two, one, got them. Uh, um, DLT calling dispatch. So uh, tell me about the railroad cookbook while we're waiting. The railroad cookbook. It's by James Porterfield. It's been out for decades. I remember growing up with it, and there's a great northern French toast recipe that Ooh. I'm really fond of, as well as the uh, Santa Fe cheese tidbits, like these little mini sandwiches. What's a cheese tidbit? Time. They're like these little cheese, like grilled cheese sandwiches that are coated with eggs and deep fried. Huh. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they were a cool thing. I took, I took them to a non-train party one, and people liked them. Um, yeah, that is, it, it's a thing. Um, actually, somehow I have an extra copy, so I'll probably just have to see if I can get that over to you, because I don't need to. Um, I don't even know how I got to. Dispatch answering? Hello, Dispatch. Uh, uh DL2's here looking to get out of town. Uh, DL2, you've got clearance, uh, 
Let's see, let's give the clearance to Ella. We're gonna meet with, we're, we're gonna have a meet with you for uh, the uh, clearance clear water revival coming back through uh, Ella westbound. So, copy that. CCR is coming back westbound. And uh, you know, your dispatchers published a couple of rare cookbooks too. So, you know. Well, we should we should talk after this. Yeah. So, all right. Going back to the uh, dispatcher channel. All right. I'm gonna hop in the hack here and get our switches on the way out. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go sit in the fireman seat. Hang out. We we, we have a we have a two camera for this. Does it break the immersion a little bit? Sure. Is it enjoyable? Also, yes. Wait, did he say CCR? Oh, you're just, yes, he did. That was an intention. Did, did someone rename a train? Must have. Well, I for one welcome um the uh. Credence Clearwater Revival train on this railroad. I, it, it coincides with my Proud Mary reference earlier. I missed that one. But yes, I'm glad our dispatcher mentioned that he, he published cookbooks because I will confess to being less familiar with those, but I know that our friend makes good stuff, so I can condone it even without having seen it firsthand. Yeah. Yeah, I... I probably gonna end up buying a book tonight um oh I was but yes the so there are books for that kind of thing which is really cool because you, you get a sense too of also why they would have chosen certain dishes from a standpoint of uh, efficiency and ingredient availability and those kind of factors yeah I, uh, uh, crossing's clear. Um, you know, it's tying back to the local a little bit. Um, cooking on the engine has always kind of been a thing for me where I can, um, being able to, to make something yummy to eat. Um, you know, I've done, uh, of course I've done pizza, cheated a little bit. Uh, we had a pizza place in our parking lot. So we, uh, we called ahead, um, and uh, we radioed ahead actually um, to the, uh, the the ticket agent and had them buy us a cold pie, and then we cooked that on a uh, on the scoop. Um, we've done um, bratwurst and um, sauerkraut. Uh, had that boiling all day and simmering. Put that up on top of the turret. Uh, I've done grilled cheese on the engine block of a, uh, a Jeep 7, um, hmm. did a quesadilla on the, uh, the block, uh, as well, um, what else have I done? Did tacos one time, those, those are not train friendly, mm, I did a taco no. bowl, oh. um, Clear. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've done a lot of different foods. I've made coffee before. That was fun. Got a percolator and just had it going on top of the turret of the steam engine. So done coffee. Um, and you know these are all while doing stuff I cooked on the diesel or while I was doing local jobs. Stuff I cooked on the steam engines while I was doing passenger runs. Um. So you know, I've, I've done it clear. I've done a you know a lot of cooking on the railroad, which is uh you know, it's a fun way to live. It's very enjoyable. Well, if you've cooked anything weird on a diesel, let us know. Uh, I'm I'm always interested in, to hear what people cook while they're at work on the railroad. It's a it's a fun culture of how people plan their lunches out on the road, which all ties back into the way of life of uh, doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, this is totally blind. Clear. Bolt 588 says, I decided it worked today. If I had infinite funds, I would use an idle 645E as the sleep white noise machine. 
Yeah, that has a calming effect. Uh, yeah, I maintain there's nothing that puts you to sleep more like a, a rumbling EMD in like Notch 1 or Notch 2. Um, those things, especially if it's dark out, those things, like, those things vibrate at the right frequency to knock you out. Uh. And, uh, we made 6700. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go have a snack after this. I think I've got a couple cheese sticks in my fridge I can snag. Uh, Copturn says, started taking spaghetti or chili in an aluminum canteen with a lid. Sit on the wall heater. Ooh, I like that. I'll see, but... See, like, I like finger foods while I'm eating. It's gotta be something I can, like, pinch and grab. Uh, I can't, like, I don't like stuff where I need to deal with utensils. Yeah, I think it depends on how much time you have to mess about with the utensils. Not usually so a lot. A, right, if you're waiting at a signal for hours, then maybe you've got better... Yes. Better. Yeah, no, I like it, I, but I like the spaghetti idea. I may have to try that. Or... I may pass that along to Mark. Mm. Another K-37 kitchen. Or something that resembles a K-37 as a kitchen. Yes. Um, I like this. I may try that next time. Damn it. That's a good idea. Thank you. I appreciate that. We like the moments when we learn from our students. I, yeah, I do. I like hearing what other people do. I, like, what I do is cool. Fine, cool, whatever. I like hearing what, like, other cool and weird things other people do in the industry. That's more interesting to me, which is part of why I like doing this. I like being able to kind of have these conversations about, you know, my experiences and hear what other people do and learn something new. Um, what, what, what is a teacher if not um, a more advanced learner? I feel like that's a saying from someone. Someone may have used that on me in school. Or on the railroad. It sounds wise. It does sound wise. I'm going to take credit for that. You can quote me on that now. Yes. Here you now quote you later. There you go. Ooh. This is the part of railroading that I enjoy. The kind of poking along to the next job. This is where I end up eating. Which like I'm like now that, like we're talking about the local job, we're talking about food like I realize like you know doing brakeman stuff. I never made conductor. Um doing uh firing like this in between stuff is where I end up eating a lot. Um and like this is where I snack. This is where I heat something up. This is the part where I kind of put my feet up and relax for a bit while we uh, wait on the next thing. So yeah, there's the Jim Culver's feet. So it seems to me, with how we're doing, we're probably going to get to Whittier or the sawmill, and then that'll, that'll be us done. Uh, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to pick up our uh, our drill next time. See, that's where the word drill makes sense. Pick up our drill. We got to pick up our drill next time. And it is a cordless drill. Is it? We we are kind of attached to everything. Yeah, but not by a cord, by couplers. Okay, fair enough. This is in Britain. We don't have Lincoln chain. Yeah, if it was that train that had passed us that, and we were hauling cord wood, then it would have Oh, been. my God. I'm... Uh... <sighs> You're welcome. I wish you could see my face right now, chat. The dad joke zingers. Come for the information, stay for the dad jokes. Yep. Uh, yeah. The humor's all a part of railroading. Mm -hmm.
This is why we love Nick. Well, thank you, 67. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that acknowledgement. In certain circles, I won't say which circles. Certainly not these circles. circles. It is not appreciated. And I, for one, like to think that that I have something con to contribute to this world. And if my <laughs> brand of humor is one of those things, if not the only thing, then so be it. Uh, I love it. Oh, we got another restricting. I want to cheat and look at the map and see what's coming up, but I don't want to break the immersion of our conversation. Yes. Weighing these factors. So I, I wonder what's I wonder what we're going to come uh what we're going to run into. I appreciate a good dad joke. I give you a hard time about them, but I like them. I tried to. It's it's like a wine. I try to to produce them from the best grapes. <laughs> it, it, it there is an art. It's not just going for the first thing that's there. Well, sometimes it is, but I try to think that it it's distilled to be truly the purest form of humor. Oh, just going along with the digital scenery. Mm -hmm. I've Kick my feet up. As I say, I've, so I'm. I'm oh, doing, looks like we got a uh, clear through here as well. I suppose I'll let folks here know so that Ooh. they get something Ooh. exclusive. I am, I am bringing out the rail yard back for another episode. <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, I'm ex I haven't even heard about this yet. Mm hmm. I, I, look, it's 611! Without the 6. No, no, it was, oh, it was oh, 11 no, and 611. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, thank I you think that, that's the fast mail there. Um, oh, yes, I'm excited. Uh, uh, so, the, the train simulations Shasta route um, for open rails, which they released two months ago. Ooh. Uh, I am reviewing it. Dark, probably after this stream, I'm going to be what, doing some more recording of the review. Because I was, uh, it kind of s s uh, crept up on me. At the rail yard turns 15 years on Saturday. Holy crap. 15 years old. And that surprised me. So I'm like, oh, geez, I really feel like I need to do something to celebrate the end the 15th anniversary so it's like well i'll just i'll do a review i'll do what i know um so yes that is uh coming out soon i mean if i had if i could rock it it would come out saturday i don't know that it'll come out saturday but i'm hoping very very soon um so yes shall we oh, get I this can... shall we get this guy into the hole at the uh, sawmill and yeah um, I, I believe we've, uh, we've outlawed, and, uh, Next Shift can deal with it. Is that how that works? Works by me. But yeah, so because I'm working on this review, and I'm, I'm uh, testing it out, it means I've spent the most time behind the controls of a single train than I have in a long time. Not including a game like this where you're actually a person and walking around. I'm talking about a sim environment where you are you are tethered to a specific train and you are running that specific train for hours at a time for well over 100 miles. Um, that is uh, something I haven't done for a number of years and it hmm. feels good to be doing that again. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy it's open rails. On nostalgia with open rails, yeah. A, bunch, uh, a couple of friends and I were playing uh, the RGS route for open rails uh, fairly mm. recently. Yep. Uh, so we, you know, we had an absolute blast with it. Yeah. There, and there is something nostalgic 
Not up in rails. I mean, the, that sim is around 20 years old in and of itself, but also just the fact that it's based off the Microsoft Train Simulator aesthetic, which, yes, there's ways in which that aesthetic is outdated, but it's kind of like playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. You don't care that the aesthetic is outdated because there's a nostalgia to the aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Okay, so well, it's, it, it's, it, I, it's going to be... It's, this is proving to be a good review. I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts on the, the product and, and being able to talk about it in the context of where Open Rails is at in general, too. Well, you heard it here, folks. A new episode of At The Rail Yard is coming. Thank you it's for the inside a, sneak peek. My pleasure. Although, honestly, I... Yeah, I, I, I have to... I'll be interested to see how many people come into it new because it's been so long, and I'm far less frequent with the episodes as I used to be, of how many people are going to be coming to it like, oh, there's the thing I used to enjoy versus, oh, this is a new thing to me. I'll be curious to see. That'll, that. uh, that'll be interesting to find out. And hop off the train beyond the switch, because we get off on the right foot here. Anywhere in there will do. Well, thank you everyone for joining tonight. Uh, I had an absolute blast. I hope you guys had an absolute blast while we're doing inside sneak peeks. Uh, keep an eye out for next month's stream. Uh, we're looking... We're working on dates right now but we have two very extremely awesome guests i, I can't think of a better oh, yeah. uh, adjective to use mm -hmm. um but it's uh you know this was a blast love doing the local freight i uh, hope you got a little bit of a flavor of it and we talked about some cool stuff tonight uh so from all of us here at the virtual railroader academy i'm professor casey and i'm moon rocky <laughs> <laughs> have a good night everyone take care Oh, well, look at that. We're ending on this. Night!